You know, everything has been good on our end. Um, been seeing um, more showings being booked on listings right now. I'm seeing a little bit more people um, coming online and like being more vocal, meaning like responding back to our text messages, calls. So yeah. I think people are, you know, people are are definitely thinking about making moves. I just mm -hmm. think that a lot of people are just interested to know what is going on and and how to time everything, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um i'm i'm really planning a lot of um deals for next year like i've already got two or three listings already signed for the first week uh first or first week or two in january i mean it okay. could change depending on inventory levels but yeah. um have them signed ready to go so that's great um mm -hmm. so that's what i'm seeing on our end but i think most mm -hmm. important is that people are being receptive again and mm -hmm. they're trying to uh you know they're gonna figure it out right so yeah. I mean, right now, if you're just transactional, very hard to do. Uh, you got to build a relationship with these people. And, and you know, the questions you got to ask yourself is how can I keep this person motivated to give me a call back when they have seen something? And it yeah. doesn't matter if it's like a year from now, six months from now. I mean, obviously you want today money, but remember mm -hmm. most of these leads are going to be tomorrow, like, you know, next month money, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. We're, we're working them for our future future pipeline is not necessarily what we're working on today as far yeah. as going out showing content. Yeah. Like, yeah. honestly, if anyone's having a hard time not, you know, um, getting on the phones and stuff like that, honestly, I would just say put 25 hours in your CRM every week. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Maybe if you don't have leads yet, different story. But I know for a lot of people, there's a lot of leads just like me sitting there. Um, and you're, you, you know, I know that it's hard to get through all of them. But if you want to be busy, there's deals in that CRM. You just have mm -hmm. to work it, right? I know yeah. that uh, most people don't like to call out. But remember, these leads don't work if you're not, you know, hunting for them. It's mm -hmm. not you sit back season, right? Like, yeah, if you're not calling them, someone else is. Yeah. And I've put in so many calls as you guys know, but you know, I would love to know what other feedback any of our other colleagues, our agents are getting, if there's any issues that they're having, um, just because, you know, I'm here, um, that can help you walk through it. Crystal can help you walk through any of the database side. Um, uh, but remember we're all here for you and your growth mm -hmm. and your success. Yeah. How is everyone finding their CRMs and their leads right now, uh, with what you're doing? Are you guys finding that for you guys? Um, and again, you guys can use the chat, the Q and A. You can raise your hand if you want to talk. Um, how are you finding your database when you're reaching out to them? Are you finding that they're responsive? Um, are you finding that a lot of people are planning a move? You know, it depends, of course, on what we're asking in those those messages. Are you finding that people, you know, perhaps are going to be making a move this coming spring, summer, or fall? Um, you know, what's the feedback that you're getting from the leads? in the system because it, it all goes in waves and generally you know generally speaking across Canada it's very similar you know the wave just starts at some point in the in the, in the country right so whether yes. it goes like this into you know into the different provinces generally speaking um there is there's generally a, a wave that happens um and and people generally follow the same suit and the same yep. timelines and things like yep. that it's so um, true Mm -hmm. um, Ali has mentioned that his lead volume has dropped a lot in the past four to five weeks, apparently because of rates being high now entering holiday season. That being said, I'm actively bringing my existing leads um, in the CRM. Yeah, so you have like your existing leads, your existing database. And, and remember that that existing database uh, for many of you can be the most rewarding part of your database because they've been in there um, for a sufficient amount of times, whether they're actively and regularly engaging in those listings. Um, but remember that the average individual that comes onto your website and registers isn't buying right away, right? No. So the older they are, uh, the, the more better they are. They can be in. Yeah, they, they're now at a position, you know, they're a year old, two years old, three years old. Um, and now they're finally in that position where they're considering that move. Uh, and they're, and often, I'm not sure, Allie, when you're talking to your leads um, that are existing, are you finding that they're a little bit more willing to talk to you because they haven't yes. just registered all over the place and being bombarded with phone calls? Yes. Um, I find any time, you know, if I've ever reached out to an older lead, they're, they're more than willing to talk to you. And, and it ends up being sometimes a longer conversation than you actually want it to be um, because, you, you know, you just catch some of these people and they're, you know, and yeah. you know, they're just 
they just want to talk can chat and you know and that's great because you are building that rapport with them while that happens yes i i um, would say that if i had a conversation with them first and they've still been on our website and yeah. let's say six months goes by and unfortunately they haven't been touched but they've been active mm -hmm. uh, i've been answering questions here and there when I do call that person, they are much warmer for sure. Just mm -hmm. because they also appreciate you not being annoying, right? Yeah. Like, you know, um, and that's kind of like the beauty of not being able, like not following up because you're busy with stuff because, yeah. you know, you're giving people time where a lot of other people who need to make some deals happen, they're calling you every day or every, you know, they're on too often. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, but some people appreciate that. And remember, like these leads are three to 18 months out, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if you get them done earlier, great. If you get them done a little bit later, I mean, it is what it is. Um, it and yeah, exactly. Right. But yeah. I think, I think it really comes down to the mindset. It's not that I think I know, I know it comes down to the mindset. The mindset is instead of getting some, instead of assuming or trying to get something out of someone, I think the best approach that I do is I don't want anything back. Obviously like you want a deal, I get it, but I'm there just to, for support, not there mm -hmm. pushing about anything. I'm there with more information if they need it about a local neighborhood or a community, or if they want to know where their budget can be stretched the most, right? Mm -hmm. That is where value is. That's where if you're talking to someone over the phone and they're, you know, they're trusting you, they know, like, and trust you now. And now they're asking good questions over the phone, how to get pre-approved, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where if you're in, in just like, you know, servicing, this is where the lead will come back to you because they don't feel pressured about anything. I'm just, all yeah. I'm doing is answering, answering questions and giving them solutions, right? So, you know, as long as you're giving them the right solutions and you're always looking in their best interest, people will always come back yeah. to you. Yeah. And you can also, you know, kind of put into your mindset as you're into those conversations or when you finish the conversation, kind of go back and think about it. What did I leave this lead with? Right. What kind of value are they walking away with? Whether it's information that they're now going to share with somebody else, but that that information is like we want to make sure that, you know, the best we can. And when, of course, we're able to is that that lead is walking out of that conversation with something they've gained, right? Whether yeah. it's it's knowledge, uh, a resource of some sort, maybe it just happens to be net more accurate listings, but they feel that much more confident because they walked away. They gained something from that conversation. Yes. Um, from from you know the conversation they had with you. Yes, exactly. And I think that's where it is, and that's where value is, right? I think we have a hard time understanding what value is, but value is is when someone has a question, you're able to answer it professionally with confidence, and you you're leading them correctly, right? Like mm -hmm. that that is that is what value is. Mm -hmm. So you know, if they're not there yet, then just honestly, the only best value you could do these are three things that I would do. Number one, make mm -hmm. sure that the search criteria is up to date. Yeah. Cool. Number two, mm -hmm. ask them, ask them if they want their preference, meaning do they want it daily, weekly, or monthly? I went to a listing appointment last night and uh, talked to them, figured out what they want to do after they want to move, whatever, whatever. Most important question I ask, do you want it daily, weekly, or monthly? I'm not here to bombard you. I know that you're not ready yet, and I just don't want to like overwhelm you because I know what it is with email sometimes. Because guys we guys and girls, we have to remember, we don't know where everyone's headspace is at, right? Mm -hmm. Has there been a time where you've looked at your email, maybe like a spam mail, or maybe you registered for something, and the emails just keep on, and you're just mm -hmm. like... You know, as soon as you see it, sometimes you're just in like, um, like in a mood because you're just like, like, you know, I know that happened to me before. So if it happens to me, mm -hmm. I know it's happened to other people in this world. So mm -hmm. we need to try to avoid that. Right. So to avoid that is just asking and um, telling them what they need or what what is acceptable for their communication method, because if mm -hmm. you respect their communication method, that's going to go a long way. And when they're ready, they are going to reach back to you. It happens many times yeah. on my end. And number mm -hmm. three, what I think a lot of people don't do is link your social medias, right? Like what I mean by that is like, Hey, Hey, I understand you're not ready. Hey, up, I, I uploaded, uh, I updated your list, um, you know, and I'll keep you on there. Just let me know if you see anything in the meantime, here's a little bit about me and what other properties we may have in the future. And then put your Instagram link there. Yeah. Now you're making it personal. Now they're getting onto your Instagram. If they click the link and if they like it, they may just follow you. I've had mm -hmm. multiple times of that and not guess what? Now you're getting a list from them. And now if you do your social media correctly, then you're always going to be top of mind. And that's what you want. Mm -hmm.
No, absolutely. So it's not just one wheel you got to think. You got to think of 10 wheels and how to connect all these 10 wheels together. Because when that happens, this all starts moving in sync, which makes things a lot more easier to move forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, and I think it's like a lot of agents get stuck on um a lot of agents get stuck on just you know the oh mm -hmm. the leads are not good enough oh the you know oh whatever you're gonna say the thing is is you got to work with what you have you know mm -hmm. if, if this is not your legion totally cool right pick your pain right no legion is perfect there's going to be a a part in that legion where you're going to hate. So, mm -hmm. you know, at that point, this is, I, I would just, you know, if you have a major, if you feel awkward when you're calling your phones, it's because, or your leads, it's because you're not scripted and it's because you're not confident because you're not doing enough calls. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it just gets so, so you got to practice, right? If you're not, if you're not dialing these leads and you're not making those calls, cool. If they don't answer, you're not finding other credible ways. Like guys, there's AI now. You can get AI to write your freaking campaign scripts. Mm -hmm. Obviously edit them afterwards if it doesn't make sense. But dude, like you want everything. Everything is here. It's just you doing the work now. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Right? So, so that's what I would say. So going to mm -hmm. some of the questions here. So like, really, it depends on like on, on Ali over here. Mm -hmm. So the problem is, is maybe in the area that you're at, that search criteria is really down. I would maybe consider talking to agent locator, like the marketing department and seeing if there's other uh, communities or cities around you that is still acceptable in your, in your distance that maybe are, is getting a better re, uh, re, uh, result right now where you can mm -hmm. kind of use, use your ad budgets to that side for right now until things start picking up. Right. Yeah. Like, guys, it, it's being it's, lucrative over here, right? It's Don't normal. Yeah. I think different areas because people notice, especially when they're on a limited budget and um, you're watching them because you need, you need a deal to happen. Yes. Um, those individuals will tend to watch, you know, their lead counts a lot closer. Um, and it is normal. Yes. Across the board, um, interest rates have affected people's searches. They're just not searching because they, you know, they're just so focused on that. Um, so the searches on Google have actually decreased um, in certain areas. It may not be the case, as Nick is saying, like maybe the, you know, it's the decline isn't as significant in some areas. But yes, of course, as now we're also entering into the season, right? So that's also where you're naturally going to see a drop, um, especially come December um, in the, the actual active searches, um, people going on the line and searching because, you know, for the average person, they're, they're just busy with with all the other, op, you know, obligations yes. that they have that month. Um, plus, they're not, you know, they're not thinking about making a move at that time unless they have to, right? Or something they want to do early January, something that they're really excited about. Um, and again, they might be really excited about, but they're still not going to move right away, right? But naturally, we do see that that kind of wave this time of year as it kind of starts to drop and people stop searching because I guess pri priorities change. Right. right. Um, and then, and then of course, interest rates definitely play a factor and that's across like that's across all of our like canada yes. right all the areas that have seen a drop some are just deeper drops than others yes. um just really depends on the area and the market in that area i agree and this is the other thing we have to future plan our business right so if we know like okay so let's get back here how many times have you called someone and they said that they want to sell in the springtime how many times how many times it happens yeah. all the time okay? yeah so now if you know there there's people looking to, you know, sell in, you know, early net first quarter or second quarter of next year, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you, right? Add your double or triple your budget right now, right? Because searches are low. So why wouldn't you try to double or triple your budget right now if you can, right? Obviously within reason. Mm -hmm. But for three months and so you can get all these leads coming in. And then come January, you know, bring it down a little bit because now you have leads that have been sitting in your system for 60 days, you know, mm -hmm. and there's going to be deals there. There's going to be deals there and you're going to start popping off into the new year. When the market goes down, I'll tell you my secret, I double or triple my uh, my ad budget because people are still searching. And now when things are getting tight, your competition, your competitors are going to start trying to find ways to cut cost, right? Mm -hmm. 
They but start remember, dropping their campaign. Exactly. And and this is where if you're going to be obviously, you know, determined, consistent and want to make a difference in your business, this is where you spend that money and you, mm-hmm. you put that money for yourself, meaning that you you spend money on your development, meaning your clientele in the future. Remember, 3 to 18 months. If you want to start popping off, if you can go a higher budget, let it sit there for three to six months if you can, and just follow up with those leads. If you put 25, 30 hours a week into the system, you are going to get deals left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. And once yep. you start working it correctly with your campaigns and having it all synced and all that stuff, you don't even need to call people anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? It, it gets busy. You should be calling uh, them still. 100%. Uh, but you know what I'm like saying? Like, staying on top of that database is we want, we want to ride the gravy train. We don't want the gravy train to just stop. Right? Mm-hmm. So... Um, a lot of us get caught up on oh, busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Well, all of a sudden that too busy is going to come to a dead stop. And now you've got to pick up that busy again and start right from the beginning to get it going again. Um, yeah. So it's always a better, like a good idea to, you know, you might not be spending obviously as much time in there every day um, because you're, you're obligated to clients and other things. Um, but it's that consistency of what you're doing. That's going to keep that great retain going uh, throughout the, throughout the year really yeah um so the, the reason why i was saying that is like once you start calling you put in the hours and if mm-hmm. you put your campaigns and you put them really mesh really well and you're getting leads to naturally comment back that's mm-hmm. where i'm saying where it becomes almost like you don't even need to lead gen because you have all your other systems there but that yeah. only happens when you start knowing what to say where the lead is at what stage and all that kind of stuff right so mm-hmm. It takes time, but I mean, like, you know, it's definitely worth it. Like agent locator gives you a lot of great tools for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, is and- is asking just about the AI bot. Um, you can ask support, you can adjust it. The AI bot asks your leads twice about, it's not the AI bot, it's your campaign, actually. It's the, the buying campaign. Um, right. It should only be asking your leads two times to download the app. Yes. Um, if they download the app, it stops asking them. Um, the goal with that as well, and depending on um, where, what feed you're using is anyone that da- does download the app, uh, there's a benefit to you because yes. it, well, there's a benefit for them and there's a benefit for you. Uh, the benefit to them is they now have this app. They can open it. They get push notifications. They can contact you right through the app. Um, all of it synced to the CRM system. The benefit to you is, of course, they can contact you right through the app, um, but also uh, the first step in, in creating their account on there is setting themselves up for street match. So every person in your system that downloads that app, you're gaining an address from them. And now you're nurturing them as a potential seller lead as well by sending them um, active listings as they're coming available in their, in their neighborhoods, you know, same yes. style of home. Yes. Um, and if depending on your board, you're also sending them now sold listings in that area. So yes. there's, there's that benefit there where you're, you're gaining additional information from these people. And also now additionally, you're nurturing them um, with respect to, to that information as well. So, um, but you can definitely, if you don't want all of it, you can definitely modify those things or have support help you modify those things. But there is a true benefit. And that's why, you know, we, we try to encourage the leads to download the app. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would love to see if anyone is, um, you know, uh, confident enough to come up here and, and let me hear some of their intro scripts or, you know, mm-hmm. if they have any kind of uh, questions on how to deal with certain objections. Um, I'm here to help you with that. Um, like I said, there's some there's some uh, classes where I'll have my live dial calls, but my scripts mm-hmm. doesn't really change that much. And mm-hmm. I find that um, it doesn't really help if you're not, you know, working on your business, working on your scripts and kind of getting um, tested, right? So mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like that that really worked on my end to help me get successful in Agent Locator and then obviously learning, you know, through Crystal to master the system, which I am not even there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and scripts, that's also the benefit for you guys for using the dialer. I know, um, you know, a lot of us, they, we use the dialer. I tell people, treat it as a business line. Uh, a lot of people get caught up on the fact that it's not your cell phone number. Um, it's a business line. You know, mul- many of us have different lines. We have our cell phone. We have our business line. We have, um, you know, office lines. So we much. have all different lines, right? So just treat it as, as a business, a secondary line for yourself. But the benefit as well is that there is that recording. Yes. So 
if we're at a stage where, you know, we're, we're just learning and we're gaining confidence in what we're doing um, and we're trying to develop our and fine tune our skills is listen back at those recordings. You're right. going to see exactly, you know, how you're sounding or, oh man, I stepped, I stepped too quick. I, I responded and spoke over the lead rather than taking a ba- step back and actually listening to the lead. Cause we all get so excited, right? We're, and sometimes yes. there's nerves. Sometimes it's nerves, right? We're just kind of a little bit anxious there. So we speak a little faster and overstep instead of stopping and listening. Um, so that can be of true benefit as well. Um, I think, Ali, I think, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I was just going to say just before Ali comes on here, I think like the best way to do it, and I know it's nerves, but just pretend you're having a conversation with someone and just trying to help them. Like it, it's really like, I find that if you shift your mentality and your mindset, it really helps you with that. That's that's just what I think, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Ali had his hand up. Hi, good morning, Nick. Um, hey, good morning. Who are you? I'm very well, very well. Thanks again for being here. Hey, I actually hi. had a, a two-part question. Sure. Question one is, sometimes when I receive leads, and mind you, I'm still relatively new. This is my seventh yeah. month. Uh, so far, yeah. you know, so far, so good. Yeah. But a lot of times I receive leads where the phone number is uh, invalid or incorrect or they've purposely provided uh, the wrong number. And, and that's yeah. okay. I get it. People uh, do all sorts yeah. of things. But there's some sort of evidence that the email address might be valid because they feel it's they feel more secure just providing the right email address. So my first question is, uh, would you still nurture them? Uh, through that email address, just the way you would if there was a valid phone number for the first week or two, uh, you know, in the in the beginning, you're supposed to follow up a little bit more uh, proactively and aggressively. Um, that was one. And the second question is, let's just say, even if the phone number is accurate and valid, uh, if you notice that, because, you know, we, we, we touch them and nurture them through different ways and text message is one of them. If they're only responding through text and now six, seven, eight weeks have passed and you've had a few uh, conversations over text, would you at any point still pick up the phone and call them because obviously phone is king? Or would you, quote unquote, respect the the the, the message that they're providing or the boundaries they've said that just, just talk to me on text? Yeah. These were my two questions. Great question. Okay, so number one regarding the invalid numbers. So the invalid number, as long as you're marking it invalid and I see that they're still opening up their email, right? Like let's say they're still opening up. Generally, the system will um, tell them to uh, reset their password, which they're going to need their phone number in order to get the code. Once they do that, then you'll get the right number and that thing will go from invalid to green so or valid. So that has happened many times on my end, um, but it just takes patience, obviously. And I think the other way of doing it is creating a campaign on those leads specifically that just have the right email wrong number. And these campaigns can look like this. Hey, you know, hey, uh, you know, the first email can it can be like, you know, something about like um, just want to confirm or something like that. Right. Like this is off the top of my head. Just want to confirm. Hey there. I saw that you, you know, hey there, Ali. I saw that you, um, you know, uh, you visited our website. Just want to thank you so much to do uh, in doing that. You know, um, as as uh, I understand that you're in the information stage, my goal is just to send you listings that you do want to see. I see that you came in, right? Because you can see. So in this scenario, I'll say Clarington, detached, three beds, three baths minimum. Is that correct? Is there any other features or addition or any other features or specific feet? Uh, no. Is there any specific features that you want in your next home? Question mark. So do you like, do you see how I like customer service and then ask them another question, right? But like, they're going to feel in tune in that email if they're, if they're motivated enough, because I'm already putting in the stuff that they wanted to view anyway. So I'm already giving them a Timbit and all I need is a reply back to start getting back to them. Yeah. Right. Does there that make is, sense? So there is let's... a bad number campaign as well. So yes. in your system, there is a bad number campaign that you can of course take and modify those the content of those emails and the goal of that campaign is basically pointing out like hey you've got a bad number the system requires a valid one but it does ask questions right we're trying to get them to be responsive to either the email um, that is being sent to them or of course when they go to look at a listing and the system's not going to let them until they give you exactly. that valid info. Exactly. Or like, I mean, everyone, so I would start with that a hundred percent, but if you find that there's a certain way like that, you want to structure that, then try creating your own e-campaign as well too. Cause mm-hmm. remember you're the realtor, you know, how 
people fall off, right? So when I know people are falling off, what I do is I try to motivate them. What is motivating them? Giving them something of value. So something of value is like the great thing about agent locator is that you can look at the lead, look at how active they are, what they're looking at, types of properties, whatever. And then maybe say, hey, by the way, there's been 20 new listings that matches your criteria. Have you seen them? right? Like, mm -hmm. then they'll just say yes or no. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you send them to me? And then you send them like, don't be fake, like be real, mm -hmm. right? Some of these, these leads are going to need more time to respond. But remember, that's totally cool, because you have so many leads to go through, right? Um, and that makes 25 hours a week doing your CRM so much easier to get deals, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and it's better, like, obviously, not every lead that you want to sit and construct a huge list, right? Or a huge message. Because remember, the longer it is, the more intimidating it is to respond. And they might just read it, but they'll just fall off off it, right? So you want to kind of have like a nice hook, great value, and ask questions that relates to that. Um, now, regarding the second question that you had, um, and, and it was regarding about texting people for a while, you've been going back and forth, um, and you don't know if you should give them a call. Personally, if they like to text back and forth, and I've been doing that for the first little bit, and there's been some sort of relationship established... I would love to call them because now they'll know who I am. Now they'll feel if they see my number or whatever, they might feel more amped to pick it up because they have some sort of relationship with me. And now like my, my line that I always use, you know, Hey, I'm not AI. I'm a real person. You're talking to a real person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, because now we're in the age where people don't really know you'll get the mm -hmm. older people, but the newer people will know, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? So and it, so, and it could be, it doesn't even have to, it's uh, of course, it could just be like, Hey, you know, I just want to give, give you a, you know, quick shout. Yes. We've been texting back and forth. I wanted to put, you know, see, so you, you can see I'm a real person and, and make it more like a relationship, you know, like, Hey, we're just having a quick conversation here, but I wanted to, you know, just actually speak to you for a change rather than just, you know, constantly texting back and forth. So it's making it personable, not necessarily about their search, but just kind of like dropping in and being like, Hey, how are you? I totally agree with you. And and that's the thing, right? Um, I think that, you know, don't be scared to call, especially if you have a couple calls. If they don't respond to your calls and all they do is text, then, I mean, you know what it is from there, right? Until you meet them. Um, but, you know, I would just respect the first kind of, the first one or two um, communication responses, either email or phone call or text messages. Whichever they reach mm -hmm. out, I will always respond back. Maybe do a follow up one or two. If they don't answer, then I'll probably call. Yeah, and you can always ask them too. So once you like, if you call them and you say, "Hey, you know what? I know we've been texting. Is that your preferred method of communication? Do you mind if you know every now and then I do reach out to you by phone call?" Um, you know, ask what their preference of communication is or follow up, especially if you're telling them, "Hey, I'm going to check in on you periodically down the road." Um, do you, do you prefer a call, a text, an email? Like what works best for you? Uh, what's the best way to, to get in touch with you if I'm, you know, if I'm trying to? A hundred percent. And I think um, that goes such a long way. And I also think too that, um, you know, don't just get so hooked up on certain things like that. Because sometimes we get in our brain so much. And I'll tell you a secret. Some of the leads, and I know that we've all been there. Have you ever had a lead where you're like, I don't really want to call this person. Like, I just, I just don't really want to call this person. I don't know why I see them active, but I just don't really want to call. I will tell you, call that lead. I found that every time I've had that inkling where I don't want to call those leads turn out to be the best leads. Mm -hmm. So really when you're finding that, you know, feeling that kind of pain, make those calls. I promise you, those are probably be really good calls. Thank you. And can I just ask one more question here? Yeah, please. You're here, man. Uh, so uh, this is something that I'm testing uh, and I wanted you to know your views on this. Uh, have you ever done video messaging for yes. individual clients, not a, a mass email of some sort, but actually record a video and send it to them through SMS or, or WhatsApp? And what are yeah. your views and, and, and how is that unfolded yeah. for you? So I use BombBomb, which was fine. And you can in uh, do integrate, uh, like integrate it with Agent Locator. For me, it was just too much, meaning like it's just hard to be on the videos all the time. Like, I mean, I felt like it was good, 
But I feel that in my business where I'm kind of doing that is more on social media because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all my leads to follow me on social media because I have a lot of listings always happening. I'm doing a lot of business and they may want to see one of the listings that I have coming up. So, and plus it's another touch. So I'm trying to get all my leads to go into my social media so that at least there's some sort of you know, um, when they scroll through, hopefully there's going to see some things that are similar in their lifestyle that I'm doing, where they're going to be like, wow, this guy's really cool. And we go from there. Okay. Okay. Thanks again, Nick. Yeah, no problem. So try it though. I would try it whichever way you want to do it. I think at the end of the day, whatever you feel is best in your business, try it. If you, the only hard part is you're going to have to batch your videos and it takes time to if you want to brand it properly which i was doing um you know so basically like instead of just putting the video out there you put your colors your emblem you know a whole structure of what it is maybe a quick little synopsis of what i was going too too crazy with it but i feel that um you know you just have to get it out there and just keep working one block at a time if it's working with your mm -hmm. scripts and 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 all that stuff then keep doing it okay okay thank you yeah no problem Thanks for coming up. Is there anyone else that want to come up? Cricket. No. Cricket. <laughs> well, if you guys don't want to talk, you don't want to doing this call, right? Uh, we all have different scenarios, objections, encounters within the CRM that we definitely don't know what the proper method of follow-up is or what to do. So if you guys do come across or have any of those situations where, again, you know, as Nick said, there's times where you look at your leads and it's it's like you get that feeling, I don't want to call this person. It's, it's like a little uncomfortable um or for whatever reason right and we give ourselves our own excuses 100 percent. we create our own objections uh this person's been in here for this long i've never tried calling them what am i gonna say because i i never tried calling them before but now they've been in my system for like a year like you know how does that make me look you know things like that and it, it's we we really create our own objections but again those people that have been in there for a year and if they're active first and foremost um, they are going to be receptive to your communications in the majority of those that, that time. And, and really, they don't care that you haven't called them um, yet. Right? Or maybe we said we were going to follow up and we forgot. They don't remember that. I promise you, they, they do not remember. That's why when you know, we have a lead that says, hey, give me a call in six months, and we call them in three, they're not going to recollect that they said, hey, give me a call in six months. Right. They just say, hey, last time we spoke, you know, you said to give you a give you a show back in a few months. So here I am. Right. They're going to remember that they told you maybe to call them back. But the timeline of that call, they're not necessarily going to remember. Right. And we don't gain anything by not calling them. Just remember that. Exactly. Right? They're just going to sit there. They're not going to reach out and be, you know, their odd one will. But most of them aren't going to reach out and be like, hey, hey, I need help. I need help. Um, they're looking for somebody to reach out to them to provide them that help. I think a great question is this is if you are not giving that person time to help them or think about them, why are they going to think about you when they see the property? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, why are they going to think about you? You're not even doing your job. All you're doing is you're being a lazy realtor just saying, Hey, you came on my, like, not even like, if you don't even reach out, like you're not like, I don't know what you're spending your money for. Right. Because I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like this is kind of what this is. Right. Um, I enjoy this better because at least you get your names and phone numbers. I mean, not all the time, but at least you have a history of stuff. I think it's really, really good as well, too, um, that you have your calls recorded, just like Crystal was saying earlier in this call, where, you know, if you feel like you butchered it, listen to it. I know it's painful. Have a shot or something if you don't want to listen to yourself. But, like, listen to the call. You'll see where you went wrong, and then you'll understand that for next time. And I think, you know, I think the most important thing just in any, not even business, but in any sport, anything, is, like, Learn from your mistakes, see where you went wrong and take the time to see how you can improve that weakness. Because once you do that, you're good. Everyone's going to be focusing on their strong suit. Everyone's going to focus on what they're best at. But in this business, if you can keep focusing on the things that you're weak at, you start building that pillar. The next thing you know, there is no weak corners and everything is just strong. And once everything is strong, you know, when you're talking to leads and you're educating them or you're writing deals for them and all, all that stuff, they're going to fully trust you, which is like an awesome compliment.
that you that you trusted them. Like you've explained everything so well. They trust you. You obviously is not going to take that lightly and you're obviously going to work in their best interest. But it is really, really cool to know that someone's like, hey, Nick, whatever you think, just do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Like that's huge, right? And you don't take advantage of those things, but it's just mm -hmm. like, that's huge. And I think another great thing too is um, for me, I didn't have, I don't have a lot of family here. I'm Italian. All my family is in Italy. My parents are immigrants. You know, the the hard part for me is I didn't have a big spheres of influence, right? Eight years in and start and been doing this with Agent Locator, I've now built a database of people that I've already closed. And now I have like a database of like 250, 300 people that have done business with me. And now the referral sphere is getting bigger because I'm always consistently touching base with my database, right? Because that's your life. The great thing about Agent Locator is you're fishing. Once you get a good fish, you put it on your pile, right? But imagine having 400 of these good piles happening. And if you lubricate that and, and always touch base and always care and always, you know, just touch base and, and not just touching base on a transaction, touching base like, hey, you know, what I do is every time there's a birthday, I call them, right? Saying, hey, happy birthday. I also send them a birthday card with a lottery ticket, like, uh, and I hope they win the million dollars. So then they can call me and we can go buy a nice, you know, a nice mansion. But, um, you know, home anniversary for the first year, we're doing things for that. Christmas, we're popping by. Uh, Thanksgiving, we're doing our apple pies and, you know, our pies pop by. So, like, you know, it goes such a long way. And remember, like, you know, just because you finish a transaction with them, you don't know if they're going to need your help again in the future. You don't know if they know someone that's going to need your help. And since they've had such a great opportunity working with you, now you're starting to get referrals. And, and this is how you build a business, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you build a successful business. Mm -hmm. It's not just today's deal. It's the deals that come from it. Yes. Right. And you want that repeat business down the road, right? It's going to, you know, it. not everyone obviously moves every five years um some move you know a couple years after they move some will take 10 years to move but yeah. again it's it's the relationship that you're building along the way um and and you know even just simple Popeyes I I know that there is a realtor in my area that he doesn't do lead gen he's been a realtor for many many years he has lead gens for his team but he won't touch those leads he has no interest in them uh, but he doesn't need to he i think it's like every day he does a pop bite from at least two to five of his past clients so every week Dude. he's stopping in just saying like hey i was just in the neighborhood right he you know obviously wasn't just in the neighborhood um but he makes that effort to stay connected with those people on a personal level um it doesn't mean he's bringing them gifts it doesn't mean you know anything along those lines it's just he's making himself like this this is a relationship you were a client at well, you know that point you bought a sold a house and you know i i want to continue this relationship not just one one deal um we want i want multiple deals from you or be your family realtor right so whether it's you and then their kids or what have you right so um one you one act or several acts with one person can influence a magnitude of individuals from that 100 percent. and you know what too and i don't mean to interrupt you but you know what is is really important to me is especially when i was in the beginning stages right um and doing my first you know five ten transactions you know what a lot of people were saying to me during that transaction is oh i worked with my other realtor and like yeah they did the deal but like i've never heard from them again mm -hmm. right yeah, like exactly. when you hear that, it just makes you sound like such a right. Yeah. Like, I mean, personally for me, if you want to be a transactional agent, hey, by all means, you're going to be calling for the rest of your life. But if yeah. you build a community, which is what your database is, everything mm -hmm. will come easier, right? The thing oh, in yeah. the real estate is it's an account territory sales, right? Position essentially. So if you just focus on your area and you keep touching base and talking to people every single day, why won't you be doing deals? And that's what we have to really put into like our equations. If I talk to X amount of people times X amount of days, I should have X amount of deals, right? If you're doing the work, there's going to be, if you're calling a hundred people, there's going to be at least five people that are going to need your help. Right. And then the mm -hmm. other ones yeah, are going to yeah. need your help in three to 12 months. So yeah. it's just like, there's so much good stuff happening that we all get so lost on like, Oh, these leads are not calling me. They're not talking to me. Well, maybe it's because Sorry, like I'm not mm. trying to be rude or anything, but it's just giving you that hard truth, right? Because a lot of people don't. And I'm just telling you what works for me and what I'm finding successful in this market. And this market is tough. 
Yeah. You got to be personable, really, when you're talking to all these people. You really yep. got to remember yep. that. Um, the more personal, friendly, you know, if you can get people to talk to you, that, that's golden. Right? And you know, you know, and, and a lot of it, you know, looking back at ourselves and listening again to those calls, because some people just have a knack for it. Like they, you know, they may have never done lead generation before, but they're very comfortable talking to people and, exactly. it, and it, you can hear it and the leads can feel it. And so they're willing to actually talk. They never feel any kind of pressure. Um, it's, it's really taking the sales hat off when you're making these calls and you know, I'm, I'm here to build relationships and provide customer service. 100%. I'm okay that they're not moving. And then that will transpire through our tone and confidence level on those calls, which of course is received on the other end and they feel they're more receptive to you, right? Exactly. Anyone's going to be more receptive. You know what I think as well too? I think if you are scared to make calls, here's a great exercise to help you build confidence. Mm -hmm. Go to your community. Like for example, for myself, downtown Bowmanville, go grab a coffee, go somewhere where you can walk a strip, grab a coffee and just talk to people. Mm -hmm. Just talk to people, not about real estate, right? Someone could be wearing a really nice jacket. You're walking by. Hey, honestly, I just want to let you know that your jacket looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? And then just like, just that, that is going to build Compliment. such a great exercise because mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, wow, they're now they're going to be able to talk to me. Now you can just shoot the shit. And now yeah. I think that's a great uh, skill and tool because now you're not nervous talking to strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To compliment, like, compliment someone. As I say, start an initiated conversation by a compliment. Yeah. Or or if someone has a coffee, like sure, maybe you know where it is, but like, hey, honestly, that coffee looks great. Where did you get that? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I I haven't had my first coffee today. I'm dying. Make a joke. Yeah. Make people laugh. Smells so good. Right? Like, <laughs> coffee smells yeah. so good. Where'd you get it? Yeah. 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 Different. And I know it sounds. Yeah. And I know it sounds like no, no, no. It's all good. But I know it sounds a little interesting too. But like. If you're having a really good conversation, you want to stay in talk, talk to, uh, in, in touch with that person, add them to Instagram. Don't ask for people's number, add them to Instagram. Hey, you know what? I'm actually a local realtor here. I'm not here to harass you or anything, but what, what's your Instagram? I really had a conversation. I'd love to grab coffee with you next time. Mm -hmm. Like it's only awkward if you make it awkward, mm -hmm. right? Like if that's the energy you're giving out, then that's the energy people are going to receive. Yeah. No, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Body language and energy play a big role. Yeah. Right? You exactly. can feed off someone and when they're standing there, seem kind of awkward talking to you. You can feel that awkwardness if somebody is being awkward or uptight or nervous or, you know, just that strange feeling that you get. It's like walking into the room where, you know, somebody just had an argument. Yes. The energy is there. Right? The yes. energy is there. We all feel it. So it's the same when we're behaving or acting certain ways um, that can be felt by the people we're interacting with as well. Yes, I agree with you. Um, and I think, um, I don't know if we've ever touched on seller leads because there are seller leads that happen here, obviously. Um, have you ever had a call with a seller lead? And uh, I would love to know how that goes. Like, what are you saying? And all that kind of stuff. Because uh, I can help you convert some seller leads from agent locator as well. Because I've been doing that as well. No. No. I find uh, the seller leads are, you know, a lot of people want the seller leads, your buyers. Seller leads is something you run with the expectation that conversion is going to be no different than a buyer lead because you're going to get leads that are just looking for values because they're hoping to be able to refinance. Yeah. Um, you get the, obviously the, just the curious people or the people that are, oh, it was my neighbor's house sold. So I just wanted to see what it, you know, what it maybe sold for, you know, different scenarios like that, where they're not necessarily ready to move right away. Um, your buyer leads, many of them, not all of them, of course, are sellers as well, because the first step in somebody actually, or one of the first steps that somebody actually takes when they're considering moving whether they have a house to sell or not, is they go check out listings, right? Yeah. So they often look where they're wanting to purchase before they start to inquire about the value of their home. Yeah. Um, I find it for myself personally in the past, talking to seller leads that aren't ready, you know, oh, you know, we're just kind of gaining, you know, it's gaining an idea or wanting to learn kind of where we sit in the market. You know, that's fine. Uh, learning what their motivations are, you know, why they would want to be selling in the first place. You know, what's the, the reason behind, you know, what's happening. Um, and even if it's down the road, 
you know, always yeah. trying to get in for an appointment, right? So I know, you know, you guys aren't planning a move just yet. That's absolutely okay. Uh, would it be of any benefit though that I, you know, if I came by and just get a quick tour of your home, not necessarily to give you a current value if you're not ready for that, but also to point out some some things that you may want to pay attention to um, as far as repairs and, and preparing that house for sale so that we can maximize the, the dollar amount when you do finally go to list. Right. So this yep. way you now have a list of things to do. There's no timeline because you're no longer in crunch time. You're not like, okay, I want to list this, this, this. You at least have a list of things that I know buyers are looking for in a home. So you can gradually get it to that state so that you can optimize it when the time does come to list. Yep, exactly. Right? So it's exactly. really getting face to face. Face to face with people the best you can, exactly. right? Exactly. And the other thing is too is um so seller leads like I even if you're buying leads or you're finding a buyer has a house to sell, right? Cause that mm -hmm. does happen. I would love to know what people are doing because obviously once you know, like through text or whatever, or let's say you call, calling is going to be a little bit hard on the fly, but let's say if you have a conversation and you know where the, the address is, and then you're booking a call with them to talk to them a little bit more, just like what Crystal said, but here's a few things that I've done to get more, my foot more into the house. Okay. So what I'll do is like, Hey, you know, Hey, Crystal, hope all is well, you know, um, thanks for our past conversation. I understand that, you know, you live on one, two, three main street and you were just telling me how, you know, you were probably thinking of selling in the spring sometime. If it all works out, totally understand. I just want to let you know, I know that you're in the information stage. Um, and I want to let you know that I have actually done a little bit of, uh, I actually done my homework before this call. Um, so do you mind if I go over some of my findings? So in these calls, in that call there, what I'm doing before that call, if I do have the address, is I'm doing this. I'm pulling up their last sale. I'm pulling up recent comps in the last four months that sold, okay, um, in that community. I'm also going on Geo Warehouse to see how old the house is. So it's built in 1979 or 1980. Because uh, when you say things like that, it goes such a far way, okay? Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> Those are things that I'm doing. So now live back in the call. So yeah, so I saw that you purchased this house back in 2017 for like 400 grand, which is great. Too bad prices are not like that anymore. Make that joke. And I go, you know, um, based on the last MLS listing, I don't really see anything, right? And even if I do, I tell them I don't because, you know, they may have changed the whole layout anyway. So it, it it's basically like a whole new house essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So I just essentially say, hey, you know, uh, based on the last MLS listing, there's not really many photos of the house. Can you give me a little bit more information? What I see is it's still a three bedroom, three bathroom home with a finished basement. Is that correct? Yes. Have you done any alterations? Have you done any additions or changes to the property since you've been there? Yes, I have. I renovated the whole house. Okay, no problem. If they say it that way, it's a lot more easier to go forward. Um, the next part would be, you know, oh, oh, that's awesome. I understand. What sound? Can you tell me some of the finishes that you've done? Right. So you want to ask them more questions about the that they do, so that they trust you more, and you see as a mm -hmm. professional. Yeah, Nick, you know what? No problem. We actually put countertops in. Oh, did you put, and then I would say quartz, granite, what do you, quartz, you know, we got new cabinet trees. I would say, oh, soft clothes uh, cabinets. Yes, right? Because if you say that, you know you're listening and they know that you know you're Because what you want to establish here is that you you are a professional. <clears throat> so after they go through the house, whatever, okay, perfect. Well, hey, I seen that your house was built in 1980. So it's still a newer home with great bones and that's why you renovated it. Sounds really great. So like I just said, I know that you're in the information stage and I know that you were thinking of selling in Springs, but let me ask you a question. If there was a better time to cash out other than spring, would you consider that timeline? Oh, yes, I would. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, if you don't mind me asking, you know, like I said, I know that you're in the information stage and I keep saying that a lot because they, I want them to know that like there's no pressure, right? I know that you're in the information stage, but I think what will really help you is me coming by. And if you're open to it, obviously me coming by, taking a tour of the house, I'm going to let you know, I have a book that I'm going to leave with you, leave you market stats, you know, comps and where market value is today and what top dollar is for your today for your house, which I understand they're not going to take advantage of, but later on I can help timeline, you know, your listing in order to get you more money on the sale of your home, which in turn, you know, we can create that timeline and make it easier and we can adjust um, you know, whatever numbers it is. And it's easier in your real estate equation, basically saying, Hey, I can sell for X amount, then I can buy for X amount. And now I can tell your list a lot more easier and realistic, um, and kind of guide you correctly. You know, wouldn't that sound good? Yes. Or maybe if they say, no, I'm not interested yet. 
hey, I totally understand. Remember, this is not invasive at all. Um, it's just me coming by doing a quick tour, letting you know where it is. It sounds like you put a lot of um, homes, a lot of work in your property that I wouldn't want to give you an online conservative rate. If you've, you know, if you've uh, upgraded your property and you renovated it, you know, I would want to, you know, kind of up, uh give you an, an, an I can't even, I'm just fumbling here, but I would be, I would love to give you an online, uh, I would love to give you an in-person assessment at a premium, you know, at a premium value rather than just being conservative. Usually when I say those lines, I know it's a big spiel that I did, but usually if I say all those, I'm in the house. Like mm -hmm. I'm in the house for sure. And if they say yeah. no, right? No, no That's problem. Hey, I totally understand. What I can do is I have a great campaign for you and it's actually called the nosy neighbor and I laugh. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, ha, ha. let's be real. At the end of the day, we're all nosy neighbors. Right. I know if I was in real estate and I saw a sign sold on across the street, you that I'm going to look at, to see what it's sold for. So instead yeah. of manually doing that, let me set it, set it up for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Do you want weekly or monthly? What do you want? And then from there, you just, you just keep on touch, keep in touch. That's it. And you'll get that. And I know I just gave you a lot of scripting there, but <laughs> That's it gives a general idea as to kind of how to guide the conversation. Um, and then, you know, obviously if you're able to get in the house versus if they're not ready for it yet. So um, the tools, use, use the tools that you're provided to continuously nurture those people. That nosy neighbor campaign, I'm telling you, gets me so many deals if you add it correctly. Meaning you find, you find, they find value. They want to be kept in the loop and you're, and you're giving that, to them in in the right communication form i'm telling you always great always good mm -hmm. i think i have 120 or 150 people on no uh, nosy neighbor now so like think about that that's and then like once you're finished with all your buyer leads now you're mining your seller seller leads yeah right so i mean i don't know this is just what i'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> this is it worked for you, right? I know, right? And then it's a follow-up, right? So again, we put those people on the nosy neighbor. And, and again, the follow-up is key. We can't forget about the follow-up. It's, it's so many of us, and I'll see it in systems all the time. I'm like, you, you put a, a tag in here to follow up this person, but you clearly haven't. Right. Um, you obviously put this tag on there for a reason to follow up with them in a week. You felt it, you know they it warranted at that time or even three months or one month but you're not doing it. that the key to the game is the follow-up exactly right? we're, we're all so anxious on the initial call to build the rapport get the booking or whatever it is um and most of the time that doesn't happen right it's so the follow-up and then we just completely flop on the follow-up yep and then wonder why our systems aren't working <laughs> Um, so you're, you know, the majority of our time in our system should almost be follow-ups and calling the brand new lead. The follow-ups is where you're going to start to see the reward for all of those efforts that you're making on those initial conversations. Right. And I think the way that you guys have to see it is that if you're going to work 40 hours a week, realistically, 25 of that hours is calling. Our job mm -hmm. is calling people or connecting with people. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. calling, but it's connecting people mm -hmm. if you're trying to just do the so like how i see it if structuring on a 40 hour week if you have business right i'm seeing 20 25 hours a week to lead gen because that's where your money is coming mm -hmm. then out of that uh fifth what 20 let's say 15 hours left i would say you know 10 uh five hours would be showing in the week because like driving to one area doing whatever and the other the other five is working on your business again like scripting and all that and the other five would be like now mining cmas like you know mm -hmm. yeah. doing a, like a, a home assessments mm -hmm. so but remember majority of our business is 25 like is calling and connecting with people so if you're not doing that you can't just like, expect that you're going to make a million gci or even do 100k mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Right. Um, and, and then Robert for the um, nosy neighbor campaign. Uh, yes. The sold listing is the same thing as nosy neighbor. I just, it's the same thing. I just call it nosy neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You just send them, if you have access to sold listings, just set them up on a sold listing search. Um, if you guys don't have um, sold listings, just set them up on an active search within, you know, within a radius of their home, for example. Um radius of polygon just depends on the area that they're in um then it's basically the area around their home the type of home so a house or condo or town that sort of thing um yeah that's it 
basically. I do the soul date. I do when I'm initially sending it up, I do it less than 90 days just so that you're eliminating, eliminating anything that is like sold last year. That thing, which is obviously the values are not reflective of today. So at least it only spends some things that the first batch will be everything that's sold within the last 90 days. And then anything, of course, it sells on where it falls within that same filter. Um, I agree. So then, they'll, then they'll get that. They're not, yeah. I agree, but it's just connecting with people. If you're not getting the right, if you're not getting the uh, right traction is because A, you're not calling. If you are calling and then it's your scripting, it's your, you know, calling log on that whole thing. And then your last mm -hmm. thing is following up. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, Uzma has her hand up. Osama has her hand up. So here. Hey, Nick, how are you guys? Hey, I'm good. good. How are you doing? Good, good. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, Perfect. so for you um one question would be so they're both in regards to you know keeping in touch with your leads and whatnot um so the first question is let's say i've made contact with a good lead we've met up we set up a good whatsapp group how often without being too kind of in their business all the time would you touch base with them or share listings through whatsapp and you know to see what's going on um and the second question is even for leads that you're talking to um, through text message or call, like how often would you follow up with them to see what they think of the listing you've sent over or the sold listings? Um, because sometimes I feel like, you know, even though you've developed a good relationship with them over the phone, um, they also want a little bit of space and they don't want you to be following up every other day. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? I know you've talked about it a few times, uh, but. Yeah. So, okay. So the, First, so what was the first question? Because the first second... one is the leads that you kind of met with to get, uh, Okay, so if, yeah, okay. So regarding that, I think it's I think it's based on the urgency. So in that call, if you know that they want to move in three months, obviously you're going to be following up with them sooner than later, right? Mm -hmm. Um, right. so if they're going to follow up in three months and you have met with them already and you already did like a buyer consult, let's say, and you're already showing them properties. Chances are they're pretty hot and they're ready to buy. And also, too, they probably want to buy before the next interest rates announcements, right? So I would say that what I would do in those scenarios is I would touch base with them because, A, remember, they're getting your daily listing every day, right? So, you know, I would just be checking in once a week to make sure, hey, how's the list going? Is there anything that you want me to adjust, right? If they say yes and everything fine or no and everything is fine, then I wouldn't use that script a lot, right? I would use it every month, maybe, um, yeah. if that's the case, um, because you're still doing your job, right? And people like still like to be served and you're serving them in still the highest capacity because you're always trying to follow up with them and be like, hey, like, you know, how's this batch? Do you want me to change anything for the new batch of list, right? So that that is great. Um, um, and then it's more so like if you know what type of product they are, I would be letting them know like when you're, you know, handpicking listings, like what I do is like there's a general list, right? And then every couple of days, um, I'll send a handpicked list of homes that I think is a good value that we can get good deals on or, you know, whatever um, that they would like to see. So I'm providing that value there. And most of the times I'm creating that appointment. Okay. Fair enough. Fair okay. enough. So, that. so to answer your question, based on that urgency, if they're six months out or seven months out, yeah, you're not calling them every day or every um, week, every two weeks, really. You know what I mean? Um, and and when you are following up with them, you're just building relationship. You know, if there's anything that you heard before, oh, you got a new puppy. Oh, cool. Like, how's your puppy doing? Hey, how's the mm -hmm. list going? Hey, great. Everything's good. Awesome. How's your new puppy going? Right. Like, this is where you build that relationship and you just need a reason. The reason is, hey, how's the list? But you just need a reason of value in order for them to come back to you. And then just having even like three messages back and forth is building relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I would do that. The second thing yeah. is how to stay in touch with your database. Is that pretty much the question? Yeah. Like, I'll give an example. I've been in touch with a, a lead. We, we spoke about a couple of properties through text messages and, you know, I took the extra step of reaching out to the listing agent, getting more information and then passing that on to them. Uh, but again, I haven't received the response to their feedback on it. So yesterday I followed up to see, um, you know, what her thoughts were um, and I haven't received the response. So I'm waiting. I don't want to follow up again, um, but just wanted your take on, you know, how much gap I should leave in between. Um, I give it a couple of days, right? Because no one wants yeah. to, like, remember, if they haven't responded to you, it's a not yet. What I would be doing differently now is I would wait four days right now or whatever, 
And then I and I would probably send them a new list, like a handpicked list on Thursday or Friday, because that's when most of the inventory comes out. Right. Um, and then I would say, hey, by the hey, you know, hey, uh, hey, Crystal, hope all is well. Um, there has been um, I would say like I would take the number if there's been like 50 new listings, I would say 50 new listings, because remember, then you're a professional and you're showcasing it. Right. Hey, there's been 50 listings out of those 50 new listings. Here's 10 listings that I think is a great fit, um, especially, you know, number one, three and five, whatever those addresses are. I think those are are really good opportunities. And if you're op if you're available this weekend or week, let's go see them. OK, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I'm not scared. Scared. The biggest thing that I pulled out of this is I didn't hear anything about when are these people planning on moving? Um, we have great conversations with people and then we anticipate that they're going to move right away because they're just talking about it. Da, 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 but we actually fail to ask what the motivation is. Uh, you know, yet, when, we, when we plan on moving. So if we forget to ask that and they're looking at listings and then we try to go to book showings and wondering why they're not answering, now we're now we're coming across the sales pressure. Yeah, no, you're right. And, and I think the biggest challenge that I have is kind of getting into the personal space, um, not personal space, but like the lead that I've been, sh that I showed the first set of properties to, um, we had a good conversation, but I still have two questions that I have yet to ask because I feel like once I've developed that trust from them, maybe I could ask one with the timeline thing you're mentioning. And second mm -hmm. was, you know, whether they need help with pre-approvals or if they already have a mortgage pre-approved. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. And Timeline should be one of the first things that we're, you know, in the first conversation when we're talking yeah. to when, you know, it's the, the, when, the, why, the, what, and the where. Yeah. You know, when do they plan on actioning their criteria? What's making them, you know, what's the reason behind the move or what's yes. holding them back from moving, right? So we yes. want, it's key information to know that so that you aren't following up and then wondering why aren't they getting back to me? Well, she could be a year out right? yeah, and you're trying absolutely. to get her to go look at houses and she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. right? So it's, yeah. it's making sure that we, we grab that, that information, but, um, you know, sending them listings and things and checking in on them is all relevant to their timeline. Yes. And and the last thing I want to add to that is this is in and every everyone has different approaches, right? I actually don't ask unless the timeline is stated. I actually don't ask anything about a timeline till the end of the call. Because I feel like if I and this is all different from everyone, right? But based yeah. on my scripts and how I script myself, mm -hmm. is I want to know just the general. I want to know you're in the information stage. I want your guard to be down. In that guard, I want to uh, highlight your search criteria and find you homes that you do want to see. After that, I'm building a little bit of report with her and then I'm finding out, hey, have you been pre-approved? I think yeah. your problem, Usama, is you don't have a script. Like you have a script, but yeah. like you, like for me, I'm calling, like when I have a call, I'm calling from A to Z. Like I'm mm -hmm. saying the whole script rather, even if they're telling me no, I'm still going through the motion of my whole script, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So after after finding out the uh, t uh, after finding out um, the search criteria, building the relationship, then I'm going to ask, hey, have you been pre-approved? You know, do you have anyone? Do you have a mortgage agent that you can trust? That's mm -hmm. how I lead into it. And if yeah. they go yes, then great. Um, mm -hmm. If they say yes and be like, okay, awesome. Is that person? And then I'm asking questions. Is that person a mortgage agent, like a broker, or someone at a traditional bank? Because do you know the difference between the two? So here I am again, educating now, feeling like they may have missed out on something, right? Well, if, they say, if they say no, then be like, hey, listen, I have a mortgage broker who can shop for you, um, which will save you time. Or most people like to shop at the same bank that they're they're currently at. Which one do you, would you like to do? Usually they'll be like, oh, I'll start with my bank. Or if they are experienced homeowners, I'll go with a broker. Yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. Now, now that I look at the CRM, uh, I see that, she did meant they did mention that one their first time home buyers, and it also mm -hmm. said the pre approved in the timeline is three to six. But I'll definitely include that in my script going forward. Mm -hmm. and answer. That's yeah. probably yeah. ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And and those timelines for other people it could be three to six months is when they want to start looking at homes or when they want to be in a home. Yeah. Right. So that there's there's triggering everyone's going to fill that out, and it's never always accurate. Right. So yes, people, sure. people put what they think, you know, that's obviously not necessarily, or they'll put like, you know, just curious or not like, you know, 12 plus months out or whatever it is. Um, I, I, you know, use it as a reference point, but I would still 100% try to, to get the approximate timeline from you. them.
Yeah, for sure. And then yeah. at the end, I'm asking. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. At the end of the day, yeah. I'm, I am asking what their timeline yeah. is afterwards. Yeah. But I feel like they won't give you the truth until like you go through yeah. the 10 minute conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that's yeah. how I feel. But yeah. yeah. But Perfect. okay. Uh, yeah. I hope everyone okay. have a great day. If you have any questions, just uh, hit me up on Instagram. Okay. Thanks, you Crystal. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone. See you in a couple okay, of bye. weeks. Bye, guys.